good morning and uh, in today's tutorial on systematics we, we, we had a small introductory class related to what taxonomy is etc and what are the different divisions or the subheadings which come under taxonomy or with the what zoology is what are the subdivisions under the subject zoology what is the relevance of having different subheadings under zoology and the uh, you know what nomenclature what systematics it is everything in a brief account and today let me begin the class before begin the class let me ask you a question we'll begin the session with a small question like I've, you can see here two pictures i've labeled a and b i've labeled the two insects as a and b can you name the insect a and b you can put your answer in the chat box name the insect a the com not the scientific name just the common name or how do you commonly call this insect you can put that in uh, english that is just if it is same, you can write the same name, A and B, the same name. Or if it is different, you can give different names. Just give the common name. Like we say butterfly, housefly, uh, mosquito. These are the common terms which we use for some of the insects. Like that, yeah. A is dragonfly. Good. One person has responded. Sri Lakshmi, A is a dragonfly. A is a dragonfly. What about B? A is a dragonfly. Good. Answers are coming. A is a dragonfly. Correct. What about B? Yeah. Same name, dragonfly, dragonfly. All of you have given the name as dragonfly. Dragonflies, two species. Okay, then the dragonfly or dragonfly. All of you have given the answer as the all of you have given the answer dragonfly. But this is all of you have given the name dragonfly. Hmm? Yes, this is a dragonfly. This is actually not even uh having a slight importance or slight relevance in today's class and before beginning I just want all of you to join and begin with a small general awareness. All have given the name of insect A as dragonfly. Commonly you call it Tumbi. Tumbi in the beginning eat like a curry on the Udvada sound that on the road on the they make love noise by fluttering its wings. I'm not getting into the details of its uh, nature or something. What is B then? Hmm? There is of course slight difference. You can uh, notice the difference between the wing pattern, the observed uh, difference and the notable difference. How many legs insect has? How many legs insect has? How many legs this insect has? How many legs this insect has? You can say in pairs or in number. Two pairs, three pairs, four pairs, etc. Total six legs. That is a unique. That is a unique feature of insect. That is, it is having six legs. All insects have six legs. Whether it's butterfly, it is dragonfly, uh, any insect. All insects have six legs. Butterfly have six legs or three pairs of legs. Very good. Then here you can see the insect A and B. 
and this B is called just a notable differences. Of course, this is slightly thinner than the dragonfly, slightly thin when compared to the dragonfly. And you can see the wing, the way in which this insect hold its wings. Insect and the wing this is joined together, but this is spread. The if the, the wings of this insects are spread, but while resting, the wings of this insect is joined together. Mm -hmm. So this is called the damsel fly. This is called damsel fly. These are very thin. Damsel fly. Just look around the animals which is found in your uh, neighborhood and just have a look at the features, the external features, the way they behave, the food they eat. Just a, a, a observation uh, that is known as this is damsel fly. It's Devananda has come out with the answer damsel fly. This is just a, a what you call like ice breaking to the session. And now let's start. So this is what you need to observe the insect for uh, insect or any animal for identification. So we'll continue with uh, today's uh, continue with today's session with continuation with the yesterday's class. And yesterday we talked about the importance of classification or importance of arrangement. So that is known as systematic. When you arrange something systematically in a particular place, that is known as systematics. So systematics is, as I hope you remember, I showed you the picture of the... Uh, a messy shop and a arranged shop. In a messy shop, everything will be in a shuffled manner. But when you rearrange it, it is easy for a person to take things or do his shopping. Likewise, classification or systematic means finding order in diversity. The world of animal kingdom is very vast, a large, diverse group of animals are there. And classification you will order those animals based on some characteristic. And that is what is known as systematics. So systematics is the systematics in, include the proper placing of organisms based on its characters. That is what is known as systematics. The arrangement of properly identified organisms is called systematics. And systematics include three things. That is, one is you have to identify the organism. That is what I asked. By showing you the picture, I asked, can you identify that insect? Hmm? If you, just the common name or the layman's name. We said that is dragonfly, damselfly and all. First thing in, in, in systematics is you have to identify that organism. Then, organism it include identification include the determination of the correct position of the organism in the plan of classification. Correct or level of classification of the kingdom phylum. We'll come to it later. So Oru fish oru arthropod or bird or mammal and the first title proper identified in the tana. So, systematics, the first part is identification. I asked you, it is an insect. Then you said it is a dragonfly. Then again, if I asked, what is the uh, genus or what is the scientific name of that insect? That is a different step. So, the the step of the systematics. Arrange the systematics the most important and the first step is identification. Now coming to the animals case, systematics animal kingdom, you have to clearly identify 
whether that organism is a mammal, a fish, a insect, in the identify you Then it is a recognition of the basic taxonomic unit of the species. Then you have to identify what the species is. So systematics le identification. Then second is taxonomy. Taxonomy means taxes means arrangement and nomos means you have to arrange in order. Taxonomy in the varayana. So taxonomy is the describing the new taxa. Either taxa il varim alleghi either heading in the thaad alleghi either group il pedum in the kandavidikinadana taxonomy il chayinadu. There are of course certain rules and regulations based on where you have to place the animal. One animal na namla kandam board. Other either ana other either taxa da gheedi da anale group. Either group in the gheedi da varunno enna ullada. Scientifically, you have to study and keep it. And this term taxa, taxa and all right, taxa, the taxa is an animal, it has to be done. That is known as taxa, taxonomy. And of course, the third one is phylogenetics. Phylogenetics means the ancestral history. Phylogeny means ancestral history, the study of Ancestral history is called phylogeny. Ancestral characters, the study of ancestral characters or study of ancestral history is called phylogenetics. So phylogeny in the world, we have to identify the animal, whether it is a bird or a fish. We have to identify the tax, the group, the heading of the group. Moonamada, that is the evolutionary history. That is the number of choice in Alipa. Simply, if amphibians say, I am just putting you a question general because you have studied a little bit in biology in your school level. I am just asking a question. Who, which group of animals are the ancestors of amphibians? Just one question. Name the ancestors. Of amphibians. Can you name the ancestor of amphibian? Frog in there, the ancestor. With the general awareness or with the uh, general knowledge which you have so far attained, you can answer. Just think. Not. Uh, just the ancestor of, yes, correct, Sri Lakshmi has come up with the answer. It is fishes. That is, you have learned uh, the, the ancestor of that uh, amphibians are said to be fishes. Or we say the amphibians have evolved from fishes. Hmm? That is what is known as phylogeny. Meaning, study or determination of the Ancestral relationship of organisms and the group's evolutionary history through time. One organism is not the ancestor. One organism is not the ancestor. One ancestral history is not the ancestor. That is what is known as phylogenetics. It is the field of biology concerned with the understanding, identifying the evolutionary relationship between many different kinds of life on earth. That is known as phylogenetics. Apo systematics in the world, ee moon kariyengala cherna veruna niyana systematics in the world. So systematics in the identification plus taxonomy plus phylogenetics. Now, this is a uh, definition of taxonomy. That is the discipline of classifying organisms and assigning each organism a universally accepted name. That is what is known as taxonomy. You have to classify the organism and name the organism. And that is what is known as taxonomy. And the taxonomy is divided into three phases or the taxonomical study is based on three different phases. They are Alpha taxonomy, 
beta taxonomy and gamma taxonomy. Hmm? Taxonomy in the other end it is based on three phases that is alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha in the other identification uh, that we uh, said phylogenetics, everything come together under this systematics. So, that's the moon process in taxonomy. The first is alpha taxonomy. Alpha taxonomy means the level at which the species are character, characterized. Alpha taxonomy is the first phase. Taxonomy is the moon. Uh, in the phase, a single moon stage. Taxonomic number of animal like under Vidicu, other group will chair can and give. E moon the process of Buri, Kadana, Pona, and Nade, step by step at the aid on the aid group will win the Kandavidikan that table. That is alpha taxonomy includes species description. Namla the Padan Kanda the Vole, or the Tumbiana Angela, you have to identify that it is an insect, it has three legs. It has got a uh, what um, antenna or it has got a uh, four two pairs of wings. Other than species description. In this e species description, it is based on specific keys. Tell us specific keys. I think or a list on that. Which I am open. Now, when you insect, ne pretty well. Now, what you see is you have to first look at the insect. How many legs? Uh, how many pairs of wings it has? Ethra pair wing under other in antenna and proboscis under Angana Korsikari. That's what is known as taxonomic keys. Taxonomic keys are used to identify the organism specifically. Adhanayana, taxonomic keys and the So the first phase of the taxonomy is called alpha taxon. This is important. You will get questions from this session. Uh what is alpha taxonomy, beta taxonomy and all. Alpha taxonomy include the description of the species. Hmm? And how the description is done? It is done with the help of the taxonomy keys and diagnosis. That means you have to closely observe the organism. If you have a identify it, you told that it is a dragonfly. No kin sheshame, you was able to tell the answer. That is known as So, alpha taxonomy include the species description, beta, uh, first phase. For first phase, le, insect in a kandu, adhanetra chera gonda, trakal on the nobu. That is known as alpha taxonomy. And that is done with the help of this taxonomy keys. Then, next is beta taxonomy. Beta taxonomy is the identification of the natural groups and biological classes or it include the arrangement of the species into particular categories. If I am saying, one organism is going to be fish and we will group it. That is beta taxonomy. Beta taxonomy include the identification of natural groups. We are going to be a group of natural groups. One person is going to be an insect or a fish. We are going to be a group of natural groups. We are going to be a group of natural groups. Fishana. So, fish in the group load to Pedatun. That is known as beta taxonomy. So, beta means identification of natural groups and the biological class. Adhanayana, beta taxonomy. Now, third is gamma taxonomy. It includes the study of the evolutionary process and patterns. So, this is known as gamma, uh, the three. Phases of these are the three 
different phases of taxonomy alpha taxonomy beta taxonomy and gamma taxonomy gamma alpha refers to species description beta taxonomy refers to the, the grouping in natural groups the gamma taxonomy include the analysis of the groups uh, animal based on the evolutionary process and finding the similarity and dissimilarities with the previously reported organisms now coming to the history of classification coming to the history of classification first is of course this classification has got a very long history ille namukku or organs ne kaanum adu endayittu group cheyanam ennallathu maybe of course the time from then uh, human beings have evolved the practice of classifying might have originated ille ellam ingane classify the group cheyidu so nammude veetil thanne kitchen tools aanengil we'll keep in kitchen your books you keep in book shelves angana oru onnu then adine classification appo animals ne oru onnu kaanumbodeykum no andana we have the tendency to classify and we have the tendency to give some name to this organisms and that is known as that comes under this history of classification nan innale thanne parnu history of classification alle classification importance eppadana oru asugam spread cheyunu inna tharam poduga spread cheyunu angane kandupidikka allada oru cheriyude medicinal properties study cheyana അപ്പൊ ആ ചെടിയുടെ പേര് അതിന്റെ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സ് അതൊക്കെ പഠിക്കുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് ഫാർമസ്യൂട്ടിക്കൽ ഇൻഡസ്ട്രീസ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് എ വെരി ഗുഡ് ബെനിഫിറ്റ് അതാണ് സോ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് സോ ദി ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിഗേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ സയന്റിസ് ഇസ് ഡൺ ഇൻ എ റാഷണൽ വേ സോ ദി ഫാദർ ഓഫ് ബയോളജിക്കൽ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇസ് അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടിൽ അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടിൽ ഹൂ ലിവ് ഇൻ ഗ്രീസ് ഇല്ല നമ്മൾ മിക്കവാറും ഇതിന്റെ പേരുകളെല്ലാം വരുന്ന ഗ്രീക്ക് വേർഡ്സ് ആണ് ജുവോളജി നമ്മൾ ജൂൺ ഇല്ലെ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ഗ്രീക്ക് വേർഡ് സോ ദ ഫാദർ ഓഫ് ബയോളജിക്കൽ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇസ് അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടിൽ ആൻഡ് ഹി ഗ്രൂപ് ദ ഓർഗാനിസംസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ഹിസ് നോളജ് അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ടൈം ആൻഡ് വി ഫീൽ നൗ വെൻ വി ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ഹിസ് ഫൈൻഡിങ്സ് ഓർ ഹിസ് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ വി ഫീൽ ഇറ്റ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ഓ ഇറ്റ്സ് വെരി ചൈൽഡിഷ് ഇല്ലേ പണ്ട് അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടിലെ ക്ലാസിഫൈ ചെയ്ത ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷനെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മൾ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ കുറെ കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ കണ്ടിട്ട് പറയും ചൈൽഡിഷ് ആണ് ലെറ്റ്സ് സി ഹം സം എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ലൈക്ക് ഗ്രൂപ്പിംഗ് ഐ വിൽ പുട്ട് എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇസ് ഇൻസെക്ട് ബേർഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് മാമൽസ് കം അണ്ടർ ദ സെയിം ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഡസ് ദ ഇൻസെക്ട് മാമൽസ് സോറി ഡസ് ദ ഇൻസെക്ട് ദ ബാറ്റ്സ് and the birds come under same group and this is actually when you look at it aristotle did the classification based on uh, the view that all those animals which fly can be put in one group i'll put a question you can answer the question in the chat box all the animals that fly are comes under same group that is butterfly butterfly the crow and the bat butterfly crow and bat thus they come under same group thus they come under same group and i'm sure the answers will come in the chat box uh and it, uh, of course i now you may think this is very childish so earlier classification it was like this they put all the animals which can fly under yes you give the answer no it is it, it seems to be very childish but after the classification ingena irunnu parakkuna ellavareyum sertha oru group neendunna ellavareyum sertha oru group allengil cheragulla ellavareyum sertha ഒരു ഗ്രൂപ്പ് അങ്ങനെ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സയന്റിഫിക് നോളജ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ഗുഡ് 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 യുവർ ആൻസേഴ്സ് ആർ കമ്മിങ് യു ഹാവ് ഗുഡ് നോളജ് അബൌട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓർ ബേസിക് നോളജ് അബൌട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ദീസ് ആർ ദ വേസ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ദ ഏർലി ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ വാസ് ഡൺ ഇനി ഓൾ ദോസ് ആനിമൽസ് വാസ് അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടലിന്റെ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷനിൽ 
ബോഡിയിൽ റെഡ് കളർ ബ്ലഡ് ഉള്ള അനിമൽസിനെ എല്ലാം ഒരു ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ പെടുത്തി പിന്നെ അല്ലാതെ ഉള്ള റെഡ് കളർ ബ്ലഡ് ഇല്ലാത്ത അനിമൽസിനെ എല്ലാം കൂടി വേറൊരു ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ പെടുത്തി അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ആയിരുന്നു ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ചെയ്തിരുന്നത് ബട്ട് ലേറ്റർ ഓൺ സ്ലോലി അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടൽ ഈവൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ദ ഡിഫറൻസസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദീസ് ഓർഗാനിസംസ് മീൻ ഹി ക്ലോസ്ലി ഒബ്സർവ് ദീസ് അനിമൽസ് ആൻഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ കോംപ്ലെക്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് അനിമൽസ് he uh, measured the similarity of the animals and found the ladder of life similarity again between the animals and later on conrad jesner was the other scientist who closely studied then lot many scientists came uh, after aristotle describing the classification like fabricius petrus വില്യം ഹാർവേ ടൈസൺ മാൽപീജി സ്വാമഡാം റോബർട്ട് ഹൂക്ക് അങ്ങനെ കുറെ പേര് ഇങ്ങനെ പല പല സജഷൻസും അവരുടെ ഐഡിയാസും ഒക്കെ കൊണ്ടുവന്ന് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ രീതി തന്നെ ആകെ മാറി മറിഞ്ഞൊക്കെ തുടങ്ങി ആൻഡ് ജോൺ റേ എ പേഴ്സൺ നെയിം ജോൺ റേ ജോൺ റേ ഇൻ ഹെസ് ജോൺ റേ ഈസ് ആക്ച്വലി എ നാച്ചുറലിസ്റ്റ് ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഒരു നാച്ചുറലിസ്റ്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ നേച്ചറിനെ ക്ലോസ് ആയിട്ട് ഒബ്സേർവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ആളിനെയാണ് വി കോൾ എ നാച്ചുറലിസ്റ്റ് സോ ജോൺ റേ വാസ് എ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് നാച്ചുറലിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹി പബ്ലിഷ് എ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് വർക്ക്സ് ഇൻ പ്ലാൻസ് ജസ്റ്റ് സി ഏർലിയർ ദോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഹൂ ഹാവ് ഗിവൻ എ വെരി ഗുഡ് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഓർ എ വെരി ഗുഡ് റൈറ്റ് അബൌട്ട് ദ പ്ലാൻസ് ദ ആനിമൽസ് ആൻഡ് ദ നേച്ചർ വെർ നോട്ട് സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് they were actually people who closely observed the nature and the animals ille animals ne birds ne varare close aayittu observe cheyna aalkaraana ka kore kandu pidithangal okke kondu vanna pinne aanu adu oru scientific reethilottokke maarayidu so you all can be very good observers of nature very good observers of animals and every day when i begin the class i will be putting you some questions like this uh, so that you will be able to know the small small names common names of animals so that is john ray john ray was a english naturalist and he classified the plants and published his findings in the book called historia plantarum his book was historia plantarum historia plantarum in his book Historia Plantarum John Ray gave the details about the plants which he have observed he, and he <clears throat> classified the plants based on his knowledge on how they look or the how where they live and all then slowly things started changing and this John Ray's findings came in the year 1627 to 17 not by then came the most widely accepted system of classification and that was done by Carl Linnaeus this is known as linnaean classification system you might have learned and in the 18th century and that was the landmark in the history of taxonomy in the history of taxonomy the linnaean classification was a landmark and this is that is his great work is called systeme nature you can see here this is his findings that is systeme uh, nature which is having different editions during his his all his findings come under different editions of systeme nature and there were almost 12 editions he ore perile thanne bookina 12 editions carl linnaeus ennu parayna scientist inde ayirunnu valare ellavarum thanne accept cheyidu oru thara classification adehathinte classifications okke thanne adeham systema nature ennu parayna oru pusthakathil publish cheyidu aa pusthakathine 12 volumes alle 12 editions undayirunnu and the first edition of systema nature came in this is the first edition the picture which i have shown here is the outer covering of the first edition the first edition came out in 1975 sorry 1935 the first edition came out in 1970 uh, sorry first edition came out in 1735 
सेवेंटीन थर्टी फाइव फस्ट एडिशन अगर पन्द्रुद एडिशन आयेटेड द मोडे सिस्टमाटिक and he is called the father of modern classification so karl linnaeus is called the father of modern classification egadesham scientific basis um kuda vechu animals ne classify cheyanadana oru nalla oru thodakam aayirunnu adehathinte kandu pidutana so he is called the father of modern classification फादर ऑफ क्लासीफिकेशन आदमीफिकेशन कुछ प्रतिपादी पर अरस्टोटल फादर ऑफ क्लासीफिकेशन अल फादर ऑफ क्लासीफिकेशन दैट वॉज अरस्टोटल आरूटिमुपत्ंजिलिनाइसीमा नेचर वन क्यों इन क्लासीफेण मॉडेटिकेशन then the linnaeus classification was actually uh, rooted on the findings by ray john ray the findings ne base edittayirunnu carl linnaeus adehathinte classification kondu vannathu and the important thing was the uh, that uh, carl linnaeus face edud before linnaeus njan nerthe parna linnaeus ne munbu classification nadathirunnathu ille odunna animals move cheyna animals ne ella oru group il ittu अलग पर ग्रूपिफिकेशन to name the organism sadharana or organism ne perittu kanyale valare convenient aayittu ad scientific purpose ne use cheyyan that is known as binomial nomenclature a two name system a two name system or binomial nomenclature was put forward by carl linnaeus and this was widely accepted in the field of taxonomy because as that's binomial nomenclature means a animal will have two names hmm? can you name any of uh, here i have written one uh, name and just i last a uh, general question as i said before you have to observe the things very closely which are found in and around you for nammada veedinte चुट का अनिमल ओब्सर्व and here you can put the answer in the chat box the scientific name of crow and let me continue with this that is binomial nomenclature means a organism will have two names that's known as scientific name scientific name means the organism will have two names one is the generic name or the name of the genus that is known as generic name and a specific name or the name of a species that is uh, organism have a generic name or a genus name and a species name and this is the scientific name of human being homo sapiens homo sapiens is human being we have two names this is the scientific name and this is a specific name 
now let me uh, move on to the Linnaeus uh, system or this binomial nomenclature or naming of organisms. And there are certain rules in naming this organisms. <clears throat> so nomenclature means, nobody has so far put the answers for the question which I asked. The naming of organism is called nomenclature. Nomenclature. Nomen. Nomenclature is simply naming of organisms. Nobody has so far given the question which I asked. Nomenclature is simply naming of organisms. Naming is, okay, the word nomenclature came from two words. Nomen means name. Latin word means, came from two Latin words that is nomen and nochala. Yeah. People are coming out with the answers. Parvas, splendens. Yeah, that's good. Parvati has come up with a correct answer. Corvus is only the generic name. Corvus splendens is the correct name. The common crow, which you see. Good. Parvati. So the nomenclature came from two words that is nomen, which means name, and kelayer means to call. Kelayer, kelayer. These are the Latin words in the nomenclature in the vaka. Where in the nomenclature is actually based on the the naming of organism was put forward first by Carl Linnaeus. Both the flora, that means the birds and the animals are given some common name. And this common name is called the vernacular name. Common name in the barayin Vernacular name in the barayin. Common name is also called vernacular. Atama orthome. You have to remember that term. I'm sorry, this word that is vernacular. Verna. Vernacular, vernacular means, I'm sorry, vernacular, illa organ satram andangil, illa, good, good, your answers are coming, corvus, corvus splendens, correct answer, vernacular. All organs have a common name. That is Kaka. We have a very common name. We have a common name or a vernacular name. We have a common name. For a simple example, if I say the cat. Cat is a very common name. We have a very common name. We have a very common name. They may call it Billy. Hindi ini Billy nore. Or orang salah tu, Tamil ini orang ini Puna. Mana pala pala peri orang ana. Orang salah tu, that differs. Adanya ana vernacular name ane baru ini. Or vernacular name is a common name. Ini common name ana, nama kita orang tu specific ane tarik ane pati lah. Karena that keeps on changing. Ada orang India lah tu, mana orang state le orang animal ni pala pala peri ana. Just imagine India ke atau mana orang state ni le. Puja ke, berapa beri kalau mana. Tapi logat tak ada macam orang beri ke mana parah ye benda. Urbaada beri kalau kan. Adanya mana vernacular name, alanggil common name mana orang mana. And this create problems. So, ini ni mana nomenclature. Ini apa orang mana. So, ini ni mana nomenclature. Orang jiwi ke, orang salah tu common name mana berapa berapa ye beri ke. So, adanya universally orang beri kodak kala. Adanya mana. Nomenclature in the original. Hmm? That is nomenclature. Vernacular means common name. Common name is the logo member of a GVQ and a other body. If a homo sapiens in the original, human being that is known as a universally accepted name. And this common name uh, we can't give for your scientific studies or 
So, and so the I said the Carlinus publishes findings in the book System and Nature, the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. That is, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature is widely accepted convention in zoology that rules the formal scientific naming. Formally, or animal. If you have a new life, you can't use the norms in the ICI. So, if you have an exam, I told you before also, I told you, Alpha Taxonomy, Beta Taxonomy, Gamma Taxonomy, what is taxonomy? What is systematics? And these are some of the questions you may get. Then international court. What is ICZN? Expand ICZN. We may ask for one more question. That is international court of zoological nomenclature. It is a widely accepted convention in zoology that rules the form and scientific meaning. Formally. Alengil chela rulegal base jayega. Oru jeevi ke peri odakamiga. I see it said and in the rules in a base is it down in the upper under the thought again that is this it was this I see it said and was originally adopted by the international congresses of zoology from since 1973 by the international union of biological sciences or IUBS. So, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature Q.H. Strickland conceived a code for introducing the uniformly or uniform or universally accepted name for or organism. That is IC is the name for animal classification. This is the name of the IC is the name of the rules and regulations. This is the name of the name. And the first edition of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature was published in 1961 and the latest was published in 1999. The International Commission of Zoological Nomenclature, it's a commission, not a person, international, who is the author of this book? Actually, this is a book I've shown here. You can see here, this is a book, like International Code of Zoological Nomenclature and the Varayanada, other book this is a International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, which is the fourth edition. The picture I have shown here, the fourth edition of this book. Now, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature in the order. Arana, International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature. Author of the book, Nashala is a group of people and one particular victim Allah. And what is the objective? The author of the book is International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature. Now, the objective of the book is to promote stability and universality in the scientific means of Animals, you know, universally accepted ayatollah or a pair or a jivikim kodakaan nindhi taana. He, the nomenclature kondu va nirikki nada. So, the IC is written, the fundamental aim is to promote universality. That is the most important term for this IC is written. That is universally, you know, barna, uche. Alangkah human being, Homo sapiens, logo member, manusia Homo sapiens mana boleh kita nampak? Ia, Felis domesticus, dog ini lah. Oru oru scientific name, logo mungkin, or ter scientific name, kanan gaya lo. That is known as universality. Then the first edition of this I C Z N was in 1961. The first edition of this book was in 19. 61. The first edition of this book came in 1961. I see it said in the first edition of book. This is the first one and the latest edition has come in 1999.
nine. That was the latest edition was uh, published in 1999. There are the IC is then consists of number of codes. Zoology animals name J in the name basic IC is the IC is the in the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. International Code of Zoological Nomenclature is a book which is written by a group of people and that's written by a commission. And in the objective is to uh, objective of the book is to promote stability and universality for the naming of organism. The first edition was published in 1961. This book is chapters. I've just given here a just uh, brief note. The code consists of this book in the there are a large number of codes. I see incidents, uh, uh, the rules in the code. Kore code will under our code that is the code consists of articles. Each code in this book consists of articles and recommendations. And what is the purpose of this article? The article are designed to enable the zoologist to arrive at the names of arrive at the names or, or properly identify and name the organism and the code does not fully regulate the names of taxa so zoological ic is a in the book in the ic is a in the it is divided into different chapters like chapter 1 chapter 2 and all and it is divided into different articles Article 1, 2, 3 and all that. That is what is known as IC is it. Hope it's clear. So, we have the nomenclature. Naming. Naming in the zoology of animals in India and India. It is based on IC is it or International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And there are certain principles. This is important. For your exam, the principles of nomenclature or the naming of the organism is based on the principle of nomenclature and the principles of nomenclature are mainly three. There are different principles. The main three principles are the principle of priority, principle of stability and principle of homonymy. Let's see what is principle of priority. Aditya, we will see what is principle of priority. So, these three principles are based on the basis of animals. First is principle of priority. So, in principle of priority, simply states that priority. We will say priority is called preference. Priority means priority If you stand in a queue, that means the person who is standing first in the queue has the priority to take the ticket. So that's what's known as priority. A principle of priority means earliest name applied properly to a tax song. So from Jand Lab and the Alkara or animal identify. Identify the first Uru Vekti and I will add him Uru Vekti and then a pair of two are pair of I see is a dinner Zoo Tatsayo and Thurum Journals like in it's usually publishing. The principle of priority means add him are an organ sit in the name acceptance in a submit to him. Ah, Vekti is a pair of I came. Consider a chair, put another, or you and then or you each a country with children here. Or each a pet on the or a salto for each other, the pala alka and a put the study in the Pasha, or a putter, a legal or a scientist, Adi Madanu to pay it to, other than Adi submit to other carriage and the moon of Nasam Kay Narthur are submitted rather. Adi Marano would pay it to submit to the A pair I can consider. So that is known as the priority means. 
The earliest name applied properly to a taxa of animals is the valid scientific name. Either or animal ne pehrete as a scientifically or one of the journals in which the newly uh, the, uh, identified organisms are submitted are zoo taxa. Zoo taxa is the name of a journal in which newly identified animals are published. ിറ്റിയുംസ്ഡ്ലി on leads to the principle of stability alle adhyam orala oru organism ipo ningal parana example corvus corvus plantans enna oru pere adhyame kaake kittittundu ini kaakeyile pudhiya species varayanengila corvus plantans inde continuity aayite name cheyanayite paadullu that is known as principle of stability the in because there is a Universal law, it leads to stability. You know, the IC is that in our in the universal code or law. There are some universal laws in that IC is that. And that one the animals in the pair in a one stability on that again. That is known as principle of stability. Now next is principle of <coughs> of homonymy. Principle of homonymy are identical names for two or more different taxa ore taxa ke ore polta pere varan paadilla that is to avoid ambiguity ore taxa ke endana ore animals ne rendu taxa il ulpadthanayitte pattilla so the use of homonyms for different taxa must be prohibited illa ipo naan ivula oru poochaya kandupidichu aa poochayke naan cat കാറ്റ് വൺ എന്ന നെയിം ചെയ്യുകയാണ് ഇനി അല്ല യു എസിലോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വേറൊരു സ്ഥലത്ത് ഒരാൾ പൂച്ച കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചിട്ട് അതിന് അതിന് മാറ്റ് ടു എന്ന് പേരിടുകയാണ് അപ്പൊ ദാറ്റ് ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് ഹാപ്പൺ സെയിം ഒരേ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സ് ഉള്ള ഓർഗാനിസം എപ്പോഴും ഒരേ ടാക്സയുടെ കീഴിൽ മാത്രമേ വരാൻ പാടുള്ളൂ ഹോമോണിമി മീൻസ് ഓൺലി സിംഗിൾ നെയിം ഫോർ ദ ടാക്സ വെൽ ബി അക്സെപ്റ്റഡ് അതിനെയാണ് ഹോമോണിമി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് and according to this principle of homonymy a particular name can be used only once in zoological nomenclature oru taxa adu ipo ningal edhi corvus aa oru generic name mathrame use cheyan pattullu orikkal vannu kenal and species allengil subspecies mathrame maarave ullu taxa ayittu maaruvanengil of course if it is that much different that is possible allade ore group and ore characters of animals രണ്ട് ടാക്സയുടെ പേര് കൊടുക്കാനായിട്ട് പറ്റില്ല അപ്പൊ ഒരു ജീ ഒരു ഓർഗാനിസത്തിന് ഒരു ജനറിക് നെയിമും ഒരു സ്പെസിഫിക് നെയിമും മാത്രമേ കാണുകയുള്ളൂ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് നോൺ ആസ് ഹോമോനിമി ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ ഓഫ് ഹോമോനിമി സോ നോമൻ പ്ലേച്ചർ ഓർ ദ നെയിമിംഗ് ഓഫ് ഓർഗാനിസംസ് വസ് ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ത്രീ ബേസിക് principles and the three basic principles this is also a question which usually comes for your exam the three basic principles are principle of priority principle of stability and principle of homonymy priority na chale first come first serve ole aadim itta peru ana consider cheyyanad pole then principle of stability that means stable universally accepted names arikana third is principle of homonymy homonymy means oru organism oru taxa ad mathrame consider cheyan pattullo same organism na rendu pere kittilla otta pere illenge universally accepted only single name is considered in classification in nomenclature okay what is a scientific name in scientific name there are certain rules in writing the scientific name അപ്പൊ ഇതുവരെ നമ്മൾ പഠിച്ചത് ആ മൂന്നെണ്ണം പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾസ് ഓഫ് നോമൻ പ്ലേച്ചർ ആണ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾസ് ഓഫ് നോമൻ പ്ലേച്ചർ ആണ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് പ്രയോറിറ്റി പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ആൻഡ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഹോമോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇസ് സയന്റിഫിക് നെയിം സയന്റിഫിക് നെയിമിന്റെ ഫസ്റ്റ് നെയിം ഇസ് കോൾ ദ ജീനസ് നെയിം ആൻഡ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് നെയിം ഇസ് കോൾ സ്പീഷീസ് നെയിം 
Like that's why we wrote Homo sapiens. Alengil, you have given the answer for for, for like Corvus splendens. No, Shala, Corvus is a generic name and splendens is the specific name. Oh, sorry, or species name. Then there are three main rules for scientific name. Scientific name, according to them, for you need to it on the gil. Namla type e ana engle. Type e ana engle. You have to write that in italics. Adana italicized the norm. If for that word like a type e ana engle, you can see italics la type e ma. According to scientific name. Alla namla sadhar na idu ana engle for Homo sapiens. If you are simply writing the name as Homo sapiens. Like this, you are writing Homo sapiens. If Homo sapiens and is in the first first letter, generic name in the Aditha letter capitalized. Like generic name in the first letter capital letter. I did not mean in the zoology degree at the Padigan Alkarana, is it a curriculum or the better? Parathar is a poor scientific name. First letter. Will be and in the uh, coming classes, I may ask the scientific name of some of the organisms. So when you write the answer in the chat box, I expect from you to write like this. So the first letter of the generic name should be capital letter. And this is the capital letter. Why did you generic name in the Aditha letter capital letter? Why did you know species name? Species name in the Aditha letter small letter. So the scientific name is the generic name in the Aditha letter, Matra Mevlo, capital letter. Hmm? Generic name is the genus. This is a generic name and this is a species name. This is a species name and this is a generic name. Like genus name. Genus name begins with the capital letter which is Species name begins with another small letter. Which one? Hmm? In there should be a space between the. Can you? Even there is space on the. There should be a space between the generic name and the species name. Species name in name, genus name in name. It like a space over there. Now, in type E, Anna Angela always it should be in italics. Font and English word will participate on the italics and the bold and the okay. The forum scientific name type A and English it should be italics. Here the Anna English it should be underlined. In underlined, Jay another Now, when you underline this name, that is Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens is the scientific name. For if Homo sapiens is the reason for it, you have to underline it. It is the number of the rule. Underline it. If you underline it, you have to underline it. You have to underline it. Separate lines to run up. This is the correct format. The correct format is you have to underline the generic name separately and the species name separately. Allah the Homo sapiens in the Homo sapiens is it a Unisha underline chain padilla. I expect this to be correct all my students from this day onwards. It is wrong. This is wrong. For zoology students from today onwards, you should be able to properly write the scientific name of organisms. So, in the kind of basic principle, the genus name, it should start with a capital letter. 
സ്മോൾ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ആയിരിക്കാം ഇനി ജീനസ് നെയിമിന്റെയും സ്പീഷീസ് നെയിമിന്റെയും ഇടയ്ക്ക് ഒരു സ്പേസ് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കണം ദ ടൈപ്പ് ചെയ്യാണ് എങ്കിൽ വേർഡ് ഫയൽ ആയിട്ട് ഇഫ് യു ആർ ടൈപ്പിംഗ് ദർ ഷുഡ് ബി എ സ്പേസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ ജീനസ് നെയിം ആൻഡ് എ സ്പെസിഫിക് നെയിം ദ ഇറ്റ് ഹാവ് ടു അണ്ടർലൈൻ ദ സയന്റിഫിക് നെയിം അണ്ടർലൈൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് രണ്ടും സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ആയിട്ടാണ് അണ്ടർലൈൻ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് അല്ലാതെ ഒന്നിച്ച് അണ്ടർലൈൻ ചെയ്യാൻ പാടില്ല യു ഹാവ് ടു അണ്ടർലൈൻ ഇൻ ഡിഫറെന്റ് വേസ് ദീസ് ആർ സം ഓഫ് ദി റൂൾസ് ഓഫ് ദ റൈറ്റിംഗ് ദി സയന്റിഫിക് നെയിംസ് ആൻഡ് ഐ ഹോപ്പ് യു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് വാട്ട് ഐ വി ഹാവ് ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് ഇൻ ദ ക്ലാസ് and with this i will conclude today's session and in today's session we discussed about the different that is different types of or the different stages of taxonomy then we studied about the history of taxonomy starting from aristotle to john ray and then we reached to a linnean classification and linnean system was the uh, its findings are written in the books that is system on nature ray the father of taxonomy is aristotle and the father of modern taxonomy is carl linnaeus and linnaeus was the first one who described about the binomial nomenclature and then we learned about nomenclature that is naming of organisms nomenclature is naming of organisms and the naming of organisms is based on icsn or international code of zoological nomenclature and it is uh, it uh, in this ic is it and there are rules and regulations uh, on how to name a organism and how to do the classification as listed and that is a universe and the objective of ic is it and is to universally name a organism name a organism which is universally accepted so the objective is stability and universality the two main objectives are stability and universality for the names or for the names or a naming system and the three main principles of nomenclature are priority then the principle of stability principle of homonymy then we learned about the rules of nomenclature and the scientific name has two parts that is the generic name